Estrella was that relationship that was on again, off again. I mean, it was the Katy Perry hot and cold. So me and Straw, we go back a ways. We've been hot and cold throughout the years. And right now I'm hottish on Straw. Thanks for watching the video today. I'm your host, Diego, D-I-E-G-O. And like many of you, a few months ago when things hit the fan, I planted a lot of potatoes. And I'm not a huge potato grower. I'm not a big experienced potato grower. But one thing I noticed very quickly when you plant potatoes is you turn the soil, you plant, you turn the soil again. Throughout that whole process, there's a lot of bare soil. And as somebody who's trying to improve their soil and somebody who's kind of conscious of soil health, that bare soil sitting on the ground for so long really bothered me. So I've been thinking, how can we try and eliminate some of the bare soil that comes along with growing and planting tomatoes? And today we're gonna to try and eliminate it by adding another crop to the soil surface. We're gonna be adding fava beans. Let's see how we're gonna do that. About a month ago, I harvested all the potatoes out of this bed. Immediately thereafter, I planted new potatoes into this bed and they're just now coming above the surface. And one thing that's bothering me is how long it takes these potatoes to come to surface if you plant them deep. Because in the meantime, the soil surface is exposed and we've had some crazy hot weather out here in California. And when I'm trying to build soil in these new beds, I don't like the soil surface exposed. So the idea behind introducing the fava beans into the potato bed is as follows. When you first plant the potatoes deep, it's gonna take a while for them just to barely poke above surface. And then it's gonna take even longer for them to get up here and start to bush out and form a canopy. Until they can form that canopy, this soil's exposed, it's baking. I'm having to put a lot of water on it just to keep it moist. The soil surface right at the air soil boundary is drying out. I wanna try and increase moisture more to the soil surface to get that microbiology going and to really break up some of the clay that's in here. But in order to do that, I need soil microorganisms. And in order to get soil microorganisms, I need more roots in the soil, I need more water in the soil, and I need more shade in the soil. Potatoes can do that, but they can't do that as quick as I want. So the idea I'm working off of here is when I started these potatoes in the ground or when I planted the potatoes in the ground, at the very same time, I started some fava beans off to the side in a nursery tray. And today we're gonna interplant those fava beans with these potatoes. The idea being the fava beans will grow up quick. They'll start to shade the soil. They'll also provide some shade for the potato foliage, which is a good thing. Fava beans are a legume. They'll be providing nitrogen into the soil, and they'll also be providing roots that go down deep into the soil. And through those roots, they'll put out sugars in the form of exudates, which will help stimulate the microbiology, which should help the fava beans and the potatoes and the soil. So by adding another crop to this bed, I'm hoping to get a one plus one equals three type effect. Now let's get planting the favas and see how we do this. Here's the fava beans that are gonna be going into the potato bed. And in a perfect world, I would have started these fava beans about two weeks to three weeks before I harvested my potatoes and replanted the next set. Because in a perfect world, I would want the timing to look something like this. One, harvest old potato crop. Two, plant new potato crop. Three, immediately follow that by planting our fava bean starts into the bed. So as soon as the potatoes go into the bed, the started fava beans, the big ones, go right into the bed. In order to do that, you have to have timing. This is a newer idea, I didn't have that timing down, so I am planning them later. But going forward, I'm gonna try and get this rotation. Now you might be saying, well, Diego, aren't you gonna rotate beds? Are you just gonna keep planting potatoes in this bed? And for now, the answer is yes, for a lot of reasons that I can get to in a later video. But the long short of it is, is this bed right now has the best space and it's best suited for potato growing for me. And also I'm trying to stimulate organisms in the soil that support potato growth. And by continually growing potatoes in that area, I can get those microorganisms to thrive. You could say the same for disease, but again, that's a long story for another video. Now let's get planting the fava beans. Oh wait, what's this right here? It happens to be a bale of straw. 
And Straw and I have had a love and hate relationship over the years. Fortunately, I had better luck in dating and finding a good wife and partner in life than I did with Straw. Straw was that relationship that was on again, off again. I mean, it was the Katy Perry hot and cold. So me and Straw, we go back a ways. We've been hot and cold throughout the years. And right now I'm hottish on Straw. Before I plant the fava beans into the soil, I'm going to apply a light, light layer of straw to the soil surface. I'm not putting big, thick books of straw. I'm not using the natural breaks in the straw to just carpet this thing or tile it with straw. I'm more going for a light dusting of straw. The idea being the following. One, I want to feed the soil surface. So by putting some sort of microbial food on the soil surface, I am feeding microbes at the soil surface. Number two, I want to shade the soil surface. Number three, I want to reduce my irrigation or maintain soil moisture. And if I combine two and three, I'm actually getting more moisture up to the soil air boundary, which is something that I want. Right now, this soil is moist, but the first few inches at the surface, they're powder dry. I want to get that soil moisture level higher in the soil. I want to bring the biology higher in the soil to, again, to try and build these beds. To do that, I have to put a cover over the soil until there's plant cover over the soil. So straw is going to be what I'm using. This also kind of mimics the direction that I'm going for some of these beds, where I'm going to use a cover crop, chop and drop style system where grow a cover crop, I'll cut that cover crop down, I'll use part of it as mulch, I'll use part of it as compost. Right now I don't have the cover crop mulch that I grew on site, so I had to buy some at the feed store. That's where the mulch comes in. When you're putting plants into mulch, what should come first, the plants or the mulch? I think it's going to be easier to put down the mulch first, so the straw is going to go down first. It's going to be followed by the fava beans. I just think it's going to be harder to mulch around the fava beans when they're in the soil because they're so little and there's going to be so many of them. So I'm doing straw, then fava beans. Let's get planting. Thick versus thin mulch layer, I'm going thin. I think it'll keep a little bit less moist of an environment, which hopefully limits the amount of snails and slugs that might come into the system. I'm also trying to mimic what I'll do later on when I grow cover crops and create my own biomass on site. When I do that, I'm not gonna have a huge abundance of biomass, so I wanna start mimicking that now by trying to get a system that works off of less, not more. All right, the bed is now mulched. Next step is to plant the fava beans into the system. This bed has three rows of potatoes in it, the center and then on the edges. I'm just gonna start going in on either side of the center row, put fava beans in there, probably on one foot spacing. It's pretty tight spacing. If I have more left, then I'll start doing the very outsides of the bed. Fava beans are now in. I ended up getting four rows of plants in. These were inoculated when I planted the seeds, so all inoculation happened there. I didn't have to do any of that in the field. In summary, four rows of fava beans, three rows of potatoes. We'll see how this experiment plays out over time. So now with everything planted, how is this going to work out? I'm not sure I think it's gonna work okay. The reason I specifically chose fava beans for this experiment is because fava beans are gonna grow tall. They're gonna be an upper story. They're not super bushy, and they should be easy to manage around the potatoes. So they'll grow up, the potatoes will kind of fill in the understory, and we'll have this dense canopy of green above surface and all that root mass below ground, just pumping sugars and collecting nitrogen into the soil. So all positives there. Well, what are you going to do when you have to harvest the potatoes? The plan right now is to cut the fava beans off its surface, harvest the potatoes, plant the new potatoes, and put our fava bean starts into the soil at the same time. So I'm going to try and leave the fava bean roots in the soil. How's that going to work when I have to harvest potatoes with a fork? I don't know. We'll see. We'll likely get some roots that end up getting dug up out of the soil. That's fine. I'll try and just rebury them in the soil at the time. Now this is thinking ahead. This might be just a total CF. We'll see what it's like then, but that's the plan now. 
then I'll keep that top fava bean biomass and I'll just use that to mulch the beds going forward and we'll have this nice cycle. What about the fava beans turning into beans? Well, that's another little thing I have to watch for because if the fava beans start to turn too much into beans, I don't want that. I really want the fava beans to grow until they start to produce beans because that means all the nitrogen's going into the roots. Once they start to produce beans, the nitrogen starts coming up the plant and going into the beans. And not that that's a bad thing, but I'd rather have that nitrogen in the soil than in the beans themselves. So I'm gonna have to watch that. The timing might not work. So I may have to har harvest the fava beans. I'm just fava and ah, mixing it all up here in my phonics. I'm gonna have to harvest the fava beans potentially before the potatoes are ready. But at that time, the potatoes should be big and bushy, so maybe it won't be much of a problem. We'll see how it plays out. The last step here is I'm just gonna dust this off with some straw, water it in, and we'll be good to go. So what do you think of this experiment? Have you tried something like this with potatoes? How do you get the ground covered more with potatoes? How do you interplant with potatoes? And how do you get potatoes to be more, quote, regenerative than something that's just tilling and mining the soil? This is my attempt at it. Would have been yours. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. Follow along for more frequent updates on Instagram at Diego Footer. But thanks for watching this video. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.